All right, well, I'm going to kick us off because I know we do have a lot to get to. Um, so hello, everybody, again, and welcome back to Master Advisor. Today is September 22nd, and this is Master Advisor number 58. We're going to be talking about selling exclusively adult vacations today, but I have a couple of announcements before I introduce our sponsor, Virgin Voyages, and our travel advisory guests today. Um, as always, please switch into speaker view. That's going to be the best way to watch today's session. And again, as always, the chat on the bottom right is open. Uh, we always do our best to grab some questions and comments as we go along, so please don't be shy in there. Uh, we'll do our best to get to as many as possible. I, I want to thank everyone who joined us two weeks ago with Tony McLennan of uh, Brownell Travel, who ran us through nine essential tools for the travel entrepreneur. That really was one of our best sessions, I think, and we've gotten really a lot of great feedback on that one. So thanks again to Tony. If you're interested in catching up on that one or rewatching it, it's available on demand anytime you want on our YouTube page and our training page at travelmarketreport.com slash training. Um, I also quickly want to announce that we'll be back here in two weeks to run through a tutorial on TikTok with Melissa Mackey. Um, we're really excited about that one too. Uh, it's been one of the most highly requested topics for us. So we're very, very happy to bring it to you in a couple of weeks. If you want to register for that one, we'll get the link out soon via email, and we Tom just dropped it in the chat too. So if you want to uh, register, come back in a couple of weeks. Uh, we'll be more than happy to to see you there. All right. So now that 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 is out of the way, I'd like to introduce our sponsor for today, Vir Virgin Voyages, and we are very very happy to welcome John Diorio, the Vice President of Sales of North America at Virgin, uh, who joined us here on the call today. Daniel, thank you, and good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to this, obviously, special Master Advisor Series, number 58, with uh, my good friend, Amanda. Uh, we're thrilled to be sponsoring this, and um, we obviously know this continual education program is just great for, for the industry, and we're, we're really thrilled to be part of it. You know, at Virgin Voyages, we are really laser-focused on that training aspect as well through our C Academy program, and what we see is if you're going through our training program, you are going to increase your bookings by a factor of 10 with us. We see it already in the data, so um, you know how to get a hold of us through firstmates.com. We're thrilled to be partnered again with Travel Market Report on this. If you have any questions, definitely drop us a line on firstmates.com. My team is here to help you. And Daniel, I'll turn it back over to you and Amanda. Well, thank you, John. And I, I see a lot of great comments in the chat already. A lot of people in the Southeast US, seem, it seems to be uh, concentrated. So uh, it's not too far from Excellent. you, John. And not, Hello, everybody. <laughs> not too far from our, our guest today, which uh, let, me, let, me, let me introduce her right now. Um, so yeah, our topic today, which sort of mirrors that ethos from Virgin, and that's selling exclusively adult vacations. And I'm very happy to welcome Amanda Nimnik, Nimnik to the program, uh, who's going to spend the next 50, 50, 45 minutes or so talking to us about her business, her clients, and her take in the industry. Uh, so thank you so much, Amanda, for taking the time to be with us here today. I think uh, you might be muted, Amanda. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. I'm very, very pleased to be here. Um, so I, I want to get into the topic. I know there's it's sort of a wide ranging topic and one I'm very, very excited to talk about. But I'd love to sort of set the stage with you and hoping you can tell us a little bit about your experience in the travel industry and where you got your start. Well, I have a um, um, not really a different story in that uh, this is a second career for me. Um, I, my background was in business and, um, human resources and eventually sales. Um, my degree was in economics. Um, I always had travel planning skills. That was something even very young. I was, I spent two summers in, in Germany. Um, when I was 19, I even went by myself over into East Berlin, um, I was an only child and I, car rides, I was just uh, always reading the maps and always, always curious. And of course, back then, you know, my parents uh, being a travel agent back then was not something that I even considered. Um, but then later in life, I realized I'm, I'm, I have all this experience. I've played very complicated FITs combining going to Wimbledon and Tour de France with going to Berlin and retracing my steps. I planned other people's vacations. And so I decided once my children were older to get into uh, the business professionally. 
And that's when I found my host agency, I'm an IC, uh, Odyssey Travel, um, which is, we are a virtuoso member agency. I'm in Jacksonville, Florida, and our headquarters are in Ormond Beach. Uh, so I had a short learning learning curve and just loved it, except the COVID part. My, my timing wasn't great entering a little before COVID, but it gave me lots of training time. <laughs> So I'd love, I mean, I, I would I would really, I don't think we have the time today, but I'd love to ask you about your early travel experiences because it really seems like such a unique way to see the world. Um, and I promise maybe if we have a few minutes at the end of today's session, we can do that. But uh, I want to dive into the topic of today, which I know is something a lot of advisors want to hear about, and that's sort of selling these exclusively adult vacations. Mm -hmm. um, I know it's a fairly obviously obvious question, but I was hoping you could just tell us what that kind of means to you. What, what, adult only means what kind of experiences that sort of entails? Well, I, that's a good question because we know of, you know, all inclusive adult vacations in, you know, places like the Caribbean and Mexico and, and even in, in the U.S. Um, but you, it, it really is having experiences tailored to adults, not just you know, there are luxury cruise lines, for example, that are going to be mainly adults. Their demographic is, excuse, very much older. Um, children are allowed on the ship. Um, so that's not an exclusively adult vacation. So if somebody comes to me and, and, and says, I got to get away from whether it's, um, um, you know, if they have a lot of children or maybe they're childless and they just, you know, want to go away, there's, there aren't a lot of just true adult exclusive opportunities and Virgin Voyages, our sponsor is, is, a, is, is such a welcome. I was so personally excited because I am their target market because and that is what an exclusively adult um, vacation is to me, just, just getting away from it all. Yeah, I know there's a lot of cliches sort of in the travel uh, experience for consumers where they don't want to hear crying babies when they're on airplanes. I know that's <laughs> sort of a common joke and then things like that. So um, mm -hmm. it is it is sort of a cliche, but it's also a market that we I, we hear about are growing. I mean, over the past few years since I've been in the industry, a lot of types of travel have trended, including solo travel and multi-gen travel seems a big, the big one now. But I'm curious on your end, Amanda, I mean, What's the market for sort of this kind of travel that we're talking about today? Are you seeing more and more adults asking for adult only vacations who, who are your clients? I am. I, um, there are so many, you know, girls groups, um, people are just ready not to be home. Um, and during COVID, especially being from North Florida, we have a lot of places that we've been able to drive through. We're two. We're very, very, very fortunate. Uh, but now people are ready to really get away. And I've booked couples um, on Valiant Lady in the Mediterranean, for example, who they are they were childless and it's time to get away. I book people in private villas that want, you know, just a girl's weekend or, you know, they're, you can do exclusively golf trips for, for guys. Um, there, there have, there are, ways to but uh you have to look for them you got to plan them and when you plan those types of trips you have to plan all all the ancillary the meals the this you know the tours uh to really have that experience um, yeah yeah so i know we have a little less than 150 advisors on the call with us now i'm curious in the chat if if you have seen a growth in this market and growth in adults looking for experiences away from those under the age of 18 um because i know it is it does seem like it's growing and something you mentioned the other day to me amanda was you called it this sandwich generation which i thought was such a great term to use mm -hmm. um sort of this multi-gen travel topic picking up and this trending but you have the grandparents who really want to travel with their grandkids but maybe the people in the middle would prefer mm -hmm. to have a, a exclusively adult experience it's hard. It's it's hard. You're raising your own children. You're taking care of your parents. It's you're at your prime where you're you want to do active things that maybe your children are a little too young to do, and and your parents are too old to do, and and just kind of enjoy each other's company, enjoy your friends' company, and kind of get get literally get away. 
I, I think. And um, uh, my son is 16 and I'm already looking, he graduates in 2024, um, where I'm going that fall. But then I realize I'm gonna have parents weekend. So I'm not gonna be quite out of the woods yeah. yet, but um, <laughs> yeah. I'm enjoying every minute till then. But yeah. it, it really is, is true. It's, uh, um, it's nice to get away. So we have a bunch of great comments in the chat. Uh, one of them in particular, I think is really, really incredible. As Cynthia Miller says, all of her clients are double income with no kids or retirees. So that seems like a good client base to have. Um, Deborah's had a big growth with adults only. Is Do not want to see kids on vacation. Yes, not even on the plane. 50th, <laughs> 40th, 50th birthday travel celebrations. Um, and, and Adriana mentioned something that we talked about earlier in the week, Amanda, is the growth of this women's only group who want to travel alone. And it's interesting, you, 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 you mentioned that today, but that, that does seem to be picking up more and more of these girlfriend getaways, these, these women's only groups that, that really do want to go out and see the world together. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. I, I like Lori's comment about 40th, 50th birthday travel. Cause what, what is interesting, I became when, when I was planning my 50th birthday and Virgin had just, my birthday was within months of the original launch date. And it was perfect. I could not believe I had 24 of my friends booked um, in late April, 2020. And we all know what happened. Um, it, it is the easiest, uh, it, it's so turnkey. So my husband and I talked about it. I said, instead of having a big party and have to clean up and do this and complicated, no, let's just all get on the ship and let's, you know, have everything right at our fingertips. Um, and I'm now I've had one girls only um, uh, voyage on Virgin and in 13 days, uh, I will be on board with um, couples this time so it it really um as we had we decided we liked it so much we need to include them and and one thing about me a lot of my um my sales are driven through traveling people traveling with me following what i'm what i'm doing um, um i'm not heavily marketing outside of my um sphere yet but i know i know where to find them now yeah, so I, we're going to talk about that, I think, in just a second. I see a lot of people talking about the sort of girlfriend getaways groups in the chat, and I do want to talk about finding those kind of groups and those kind of clients. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, are there any other sort of segments that make up this market, Amanda, that you can think of besides the girlfriend getaways? I mean, I assume couples want to travel by themselves without children a lot, uh, but is there anything specific or anything else you want to talk about before we sort of move forward? Yeah, one, one wonderful, um, for people who might not... Um, have the network or be in, in the place of having a lot of these, whether it's 40, 50 of girls things, is getting involved with um, alumni groups. Um, yeah. You know, it's, I'm from, I, I grew up in Jacksonville. So that naturally gives me an advantage, um, but a lot of people have moved and their you know, networks from, from their previous life, high school, college, whatever it may be, may be spread out and so utilizing social media and getting involved with um with former classmates for example reunion type trips i mean there i have so many ideas of different types of groups that i just don't have time yeah. right right where i am right now in my life yeah um all right so we have so we have some interesting comments um we're gonna i'm gonna sort through them in a second but Let's get into that, Amanda. You, you, so you told me in the beginning of the week that, and you just mentioned it a little bit now, that you're sort of not your typical travel advisor and that you're, you're generating sales simply by traveling yourself. And I was hoping you could talk to us a little bit about that. And then I think we're going to talk about other ways, like you mentioned, of, of finding adults-only clients. Um, mm -hmm. But could you tell us a little bit about how you describe yourself as sort of not your typical travel advisor? I uh, Well, like I said, I'm from where I... I've lived here for most of my life. Um, that that helps. Um, membership at different clubs. Um, at one point, when my kids were little, I played tennis. That's you know, and there's a natural yeah. group there. I um, um, my mother-in-law um, and and her friends. They they're like, I'm I'm constantly working on on group trips for them. 
and I'm actually leading them on a river cruise um, next spring because um, um, they're just they're they want to go as much as they can until they can't. That's that's what they they say. Um, you can find it's amazing. I was at a um, upscale clothing boutique, and the owner said once she knew what I was doing professionally, she said. Well, we need to plan a time where you bring in um, a supplier, and we'll we'll do a, a clothing discount, and we'll we'll send your event information to our client base. Well, their client base is our client base is travel advisors. It's a it's a natural fit. I'm a huge fan of events, and it's amazing how you can be creative. I've I've had them at country clubs and such. Or if you're a member, they give you a, a discount. There's still a minimum, and but there are more creative ways where you don't have to. You can you can do live events on social media. You can reach out to your community, um, like I just mentioned, like with with ladies, the clothing store is an, a natural one. But you know the local beer pub to get the guys yeah. <laughs> going. You can do that too. I mean, there's just so much we can do. You know, I'm always curious when advisors talk about partnering with local businesses. I mean, what is that conversation like when you approach someone who owns some some store or you mentioned a boutique clothing store or a brewery or a bar in uh, in your community? And uh, is, it, is it difficult to introduce them, to introduce to them the concept of group travel or the concept of you even being a travel advisor? No, uh, talking about travel is the easiest, the easiest thing in the world. I, I was actually up. Uh, in Amelia Island this past weekend with my husband for a work event of his. And I didn't bring my business cards. I was just there to support him. And it, it's amazing once, once you start talking about, a lot of people don't know a travel advisor, haven't really used one and wouldn't just look, look us up, you know, find us, do the, the research. And so many people are like, I'm so glad I met you. I've seen where you've gone on your Facebook or Instagram, um, but I have never used a travel advisor before. It, it's really, I, I find it very easy. Everybody loves to talk travel yeah. and I just do it in a consultative way, not a, um, you know, it depends on the, the audience too. Um, yeah. um, yeah, I know that's, I mean, a lot of people talk about the perks of this industry. And I think being able to talk to uh, talk to people about travel seems to be a major perk and having uh, having people rely on your advice, I'm sure is something everyone can uh, agree on. And we do have some great comments about this in the chat. Uh, we have somebody saying that um, with so much emphasis on children and grandchildren, adults in categories need vacations. Yeah, so she's mentioning wine clubs, ladies clubs, parents club or schools or parishes, pickleball clubs, teachers groups, nurses groups, uh, all like to travel together. Um, we had an interesting comment earlier and it's sort of off topic, but I, I'm not sure if you can answer this, Amanda, but someone else in the chat might be able to help Adriana with this, but she's looking for information about people traveling with their pets. Uh, they have they've <laughs> customers coming to them specifically wanting to be able to go somewhere with their pets. And I don't know, Amanda, again. Well, their websites. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But if anyone has ideas in the chat, I'm sure Adriana will be very thankful. Um, and then Deborah says she started a 40 class reunion group and they thought they were only going to have 30 people going. Now they have 83 people, go 83 people going. But those groups are fun to plan and most of the time they don't cancel. They can be very lucrative and a great easy referral. And I assume that's something you can sort of agree with, Amanda. Oh, I completely agree. And then, and that's in my situation with, with, with Virgin in particular, I, I became a top 100 um, first mate. That's their word for travel advisor early on um, because um, I got the word out early. Virgin, you know, was so new to the, new to the market and for, um, for my Gen X, age group it, it really is perfect it, it, it is it is if you want to go and and party and stay up and go to the disco until 2 3 a.m it's for you if you want to get up and do yoga at the top of the ship and go for more wellness it's usually detox retox or a little bit of both but i mean there's really something for everybody all food 
is included. You don't have specialty dining. You don't have to plan everything. It's just, it, it, it's great. They even have a tattoo parlor. And it's amazing how long that line gets. Um, they have, it's, it's really for the young of heart and it's easy in this sandwich generation to, it has something for everybody. So that makes my job easier as a travel advisor because I know that my clients well enough to know if they're going to like, a, it's more free spirited, um, wear what you want, just, just have a ball. Yeah, and, and and something uh, something you mentioned, which is I'm sure it's going to be relevant for everyone on the call as well, is just sort of the average age of you mentioned Virgin. So Virgin, for example, the average age is sort of fits your age demographic. And I know a lot of advisors who are outside your age demographic will have the same thing with the other suppliers as well. Um, but how much of a how much is of a positive is that for you for you selling these vacations is when you are allowed to tap into your sort of network, your almost immediate network. Well, exactly. I, you know, I, I, if it was a sport, I would say I have an unfair advantage because it's um, yeah. um, when you are, people see you enjoy something, they, you know, want to join in. I've even seen uh, people that aren't my clients that follow me on board the ship. So I know I'm also getting the word out. Um, and I'm, you know, all of us travel advisors encounter that one. Well, why didn't you use me? But that's okay too. Um, it's it's really just focusing on um, you know, if you don't have the network, where where can you find it? And there there are so many ways, and it really is young at heart. So they're you know even 60 year olds it just depends on the group and i'm looking forward to my my daughter is 24 and i can see fairly soon doing you know mother adult child or father well i don't know about father father too maybe but i think there'll be a, a lot of mom daughter trips they have the most phenomenal spa on board um the virgin yeah. Voyages ships for one thing but it, it's uh there's just so many options that, that uh, it's just finding the right people. Yeah, and I know uh, I know a lot of advisors on the call um, are sort of looking for that kind of product too to to, to, to figure out which is best for these adult only clients. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I want to sort of get your take of uh, whether it's a cruise ship or a destination or land or an FIT like you mentioned. I mean. Mm -hmm. Are the experience that these kind of clients are looking for different than sort of your typical or a client in a different segment? Like, are they are they looking or are they enticed by certain kind of culinary experiences or adventure experiences or things like that? Yes, especially, well, the clients that I, I think are a, a fit for Virgin versus um, other, maybe not adults only, but you know, tend to be mostly adults, um, but tend to have an older age demographic is, is, is really the sense of, um, you know, adventure. Um, culinary is huge. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the quality of the restaurants on board, the Virgin ships is um, just incredible. And, and they've been curated by Michelin star chefs and it, um, I haven't been to all of them. I'm really excited in two weeks to go to their test kitchen where they there's like ingredients and and you you like you play. Um, um, it's like a, a cooking class that you you're you're in charge of yourself and what ingredients and I I can't wait for that experience. Um, and that's the number one. Everybody that gets off that ship just raves about the food. Um, and I think, and I, I see that across the board with whether it's, you know, cruises or FITs, dining and culinary has become, you know, a, a key component and nobody wants the, you know, the buffet. Nobody wants, you know, the scrambled eggs out of a, you know, <laughs> skillet. <laughs> well, I'm curious. I mean, you mentioned FIT and uh, if, if you were, if you had a, a girlfriend's group and you were sending them to like, if they wanted to go to Paris and you mentioned, or London, you mentioned they want to go to Wimbledon. I mean, how would you 
approach that kind of booking? Like what, what kind of experiences would you try to roll into a girlfriend's getaway who were, were very much only wanted to be around adults or wanted to be around as, as little 18 year old and under as possible if, if they were headed to somewhere like London? Well, I mean, there's some destinations I'm personally very familiar with. Um, and I know, you know, where not to guide people, but I, I rely a lot on um, destination management companies and on sites to really tell me what, what is new um, and hot because, you know, I haven't personally been to Paris in a few years. Things, things have changed. Um, there are uh, one of the, the benefits, um, one of the uh, services like through Virtuoso that we have a private shopping experience with one of the top um, uh, department stores where you're treated to champagne and private, um, they, they actually pick your, you tell them ahead your clothes sizes and what you want and they have a private dressing room and it's, it's included. So there are all sorts of ways to incorporate um, experiences and make sure you're doing a very small group of adult only group um, uh, for a tour or private tours. I have a, a couple that are doing a self-drive. They're very, I'm, um, I'm, I can't wait to hear how their trip goes. I hope they, I, I hope their, their car's good. They're going from Paris through the Loire Valley to Switzerland and ending in um, Germany. Um, and that way they don't, they don't have to hear, you know, babies crying on trains or anything else. They're, they're in control of where they go. So that's a pretty adult exclusive uh, trip that I've helped them plan. I mean, so for that couple, for instance, I mean, what kind of stuff do, are they interested in doing along the way? I mean, what kind of value as their travel advisor can you add to their vacation um, as they're sort of sauntering through all these, all these towns and all these cities in Europe? Um, again, I, I rely on on-sites because uh, I know that the supplier has been vetted and will, will be reliable yeah. uh, and they won't, you know, their financials when, when you use, in my case, virtuoso um, suppliers, you know that they're solid. And uh, whereas, you know, some website ones, they might have five stars on TripAdvisor but you might not know that somebody's been embezzling money, or you, you you don't you don't know. And when I have people, uh, you know, overseas, I like them to have um, boots on the ground to assist them. Um, one of my on sites, I was in uh, Venice, and we weren't able to do it was prepaid. We weren't able to do the gondola tour, and within a week, we were refunded. And I only had to make one phone call. So it's really about the quality of knowing what your client wants and knowing which suppliers to partner with to give them the experience uh, that you want. And also I, I'm a huge believer in experiencing most everything you can yourself um, because that just makes you, so it's so much easier to sell it because you do believe it or yeah. say, oh, I did it this way. This is not the way to do it. I would, do, if I had to do it again, I would do it this way. I finally went to the Galapagos this summer after I had researched and researched it over um, over my time in the business. And there are several different ways to do it. And I couldn't wrap my head around it because it's such a unique place. And getting there is is unique. It's 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 not an easy trip. And um, now I can confidently speak on it. And um, I highly recommend it, by the way. <laughs> That's just incredible. <laughs> yeah, so we have about 15 minutes left. Um, if there's any questions for Amanda, please drop them in the chat. I know there was a bunch of questions that maybe were a little specific for, for us on this conversation, but if there's anyone with uh, questions or comments, I mean, Amy, just going off what you said about the Galapagos, Amanda, she just wants to know who you went to the Galapagos with. I had a group of 10 and we chose Celebrity Flora. Okay. And I did a pre and post stay in Quito through Abercrombie and Kent, Ecuador. I highly recommend um, A and K Ecuador. Yeah, so you seem to really rely on your partners through your through Virtuoso or 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 DMCs. Um, I mean, how important is that to you and your business to be able to rely on those kind of partners and to be able to get information or, like you mentioned, get attention when you need when something does go wrong and you're able to you're going to have to solve it. 
It, it really is because the, the people, the, the people you engage with, um, and sometimes they leave that company and you see them at another company, especially with COVID, but they're, they know you. I, I, I place a high importance on attending Virtuoso Travel Week every year. And when they did the on, on site, the smaller ones, um, I do site visits. If I'm going somewhere, I always, um, I always go and visit, stay one place and go and visit a couple of more. I stay in touch. I make sure I know what promotions are going on um it's very to me key and that's the value i'm bringing my client because they can book a lot uh online or that's where i show the value and they're more likely to get the upgrade and those type of things by having real relationships so i see some virgin specific questions i mean maybe at the end we can answer those uh amanda i do have a few more and i know there is, there was another question I want to grab oh, from, from Lydia, um, because we're talking about DMCs. I wanted to just see, and again, this might go back to just your relationship with them through your consortia, Amanda, but Lydia, and this might be another question that the chat can answer, but Lydia asks just how do you find DMCs and get paid through them if you're with a host? And is that something you're familiar with? Uh, being with a consortium, and I, I see there's some different cons questions about the different consortium. Um, I have a, the list of suppliers and I get updates with, when a supplier is added or a supplier has to be uh, let out of the, um, is no longer a member for whatever reason. Um, so I am, um, that's partly why I chose my host agency, Odyssey Travel, was virtuoso, but also um, family founded, um, local, I, I in-person training plus virtuoso training and so I, I can't really speak outside of virtuoso because okay. I just I probably 90 percent of my business is through virtuoso suppliers um because that's how I bring value and that's how I justify charging planning fees um so my my business plan is 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 by maximizing the a membership in the consortium Okay. Um, so one question we've asked a lot of advisors who have come on the call with us, and I think it's an interesting one to ask you because we're very audience specific right now, is uh, sort of their best qualifying questions when they're talking to clients for the first time uh, and trying to place them in the right destination with the right supplier, with the right product. And I'm curious if you have any tips, especially for the new advisors on the call who may not be familiar with these conversations, but any tips of sort of <laughs> getting to know your client, any questions that you can ask them to be able to get to know them, get the information you need uh, in order to do the best job you can do with them? Good question. Uh, you want to listen more than speak. Their travel style is so important. You might, they might say a destination and, and but then you learn that's a really hectic destination. You really have to plan a lot and these people really just want to relax. And so you really have to listen um, and, and, and gather as much information through um, basic questions and also budget questions. You know, what, what's your nightly spend? Not how much, how much will you spend on a hotel room? No, just Overall, what, what, what do you envision? And, and really, so you don't spin your wheels. I think we've all spun our wheels and we think we put together the perfect package and, and then they tell you something and you went in a completely wrong direction because you forgot to ask some basic questions um, they, that they um, um, only wanted a boutique hotel and you had this great deal at this, you know, four or five star modern hotel well you didn't ask what their style is what they what they want so it's it's really important to get to know them um and and just kind of what 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 pace and those really important things like that yeah i mean you mentioned style that's an interesting one that i really haven't heard from a lot of advisors knowing someone's travel style um, i'm curious if you could talk a little bit about what a style would be for travelers and if you have any examples with your own clients where you can sort of know what kind of style that is going to best suit them well one is the self-drive couple that are staying a maximum of two nights in one place they're staying in six hotels over 10 days they're um they're that, that 
that's the first for me. Okay. Uh, and then most of my clients are are more like, we just don't want to have to do anything. We want it all planned. Um, I have a lot of clients. And one of the reasons I love Virgin is, especially being in Florida, most Floridians have been to Nassau, for example, too many times. Um, don't even want to get off the boat and just want to relax. Um, that is the biggest thing. Uh, I, most clients right now, they want to uh, recharge and and not have to be the tour here, be the tour there. I mean, there there are some like like my European clients, but it, it, most clients just want it done where they know um, they know what to expect and they don't have to do any planning or make decisions while they're on vacation. I mean, so how detailed are your uh, planning? For, is your planning for them? Is your bookings for them when they when they don't when they want to be extremely hands off? I mean, how many details do you have to go through for their trips? I mean, are are you booking their their dining? Are you booking their uh, every sort of every little part of their vacation to make sure that you're delivering them that kind of experience? I have clients where I book from the minute they or even before they leave their home to go to the airport, um, meaning using luggage free to ship their luggage, which I highly recommend people do that, especially to ski resorts. Really? You're, that's something you're, you're regularly doing now is shipping luggage. Yep. And, um, car service to the airport. It's, it's amazing. People, people think that's a luxury, but when you add up the parking fees, um, and if you've got a, you know, 6am flight and you're going to do the economy lot that takes an hour to get there, you, you know, there's, there's ways that we can advise and say, you know, how does, how are you going to feel? And, and, that, and that's the biggest thing I do, especially with booking flights. All right, that's a great rate, but how are you, how are you going to feel having a four hour layover? Or in my case, sometimes people go to different airports after a big trip. Do you really want to save $200 and have to drive an extra two hours home? Um, you know, there's just, there's, there's a wealth. There are clients that pay me concierge fees to make their spa appointments, to make their dining appointments. And I work uh, with sometimes the on-sites, but sometimes the best are the actual, um, the hotels they're staying at. Although that can be tricky because sometimes they have little side arrangements that um, Greece is very tricky with, with okay. those kind of things. I, 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 I do try to rely on on sites as much as possible because it's very hard. I, I don't work with many clients with that level. They're kind of the exception and m money is no object to them. Um, they're not our typical clients. They're, you know, an Easter egg. Yeah. You but know, it is, it is very <laughs> interesting. I mean, again, we've done 50, this is our 58. So we've done 58 hours of these interviews and you are the first advisor we've had who is uh, dead set on or is mentioned shipping luggage. And I've heard that before from other industry people, but it's interesting that you bring it up. And I'm curious mm -hmm. if anyone in the chat has similar experiences. Um, but we only have about five minutes left, Amanda. I want to ask a couple last questions on adults only experiences, okay. and then uh, and then we'll wrap up. Um, I'm just curious if anything ever surprised you about working with clients who want these adults any experiences? Have there ever been any big requests or destinations that might not be strange, but might be unique uh, mm -hmm. that sort of pop into your head uh, that, that you maybe didn't expect beforehand? Um, well, one, um, it is very surprising how many adults plan trips to Disney okay. with adults. And um, um, I actually, <laughs> interesting enough, this time tomorrow, I will be boarding the Disney Wish to celebrate my cousin's 50th birthday. Um, so uh, that's, you know, it's, it's not kind of like version young at heart. Uh, everybody wants to feel young at heart, even though we're middle-aged. Um, and th that's, what's so beautiful about the different options and, and, um, you know, we'll ignore the kids and enjoy the star Wars hyperspace lounge and all, all the adult, um, things, but, you know, it, it it's, it's really everybody has a de different definition and, and it can vary. And it's finding those, those opportunities that are right for the right people. Um, 
which uh, is exciting. Yeah, I mean, opportunity is right for the right people. I'm curious, I mean, we talked about uh, culinary experiences. I mean, I know you mentioned wellness experiences and adventure experiences. Um, but I mean, are there anything else that these adult only groups or all adult only clients really want when you're planning their vacation that that sort of you see as value add for the work you're doing on your side of things? Is there any specific detail or anything else that we haven't talked about today that you think is appropriate to mention in the call? Um, I think the most important um, is, is getting people to make decisions. I, I know that my productivity um, is it can be challenged because at at you know talking about kind of this middle age group in particular and getting them to just actually pull the trigger um it's not you know it, unlike the um non-premium um suppliers that have these flash sales and people feel you know that pressure and and people younger people especially that have such a tight budget um, older people are like, I don't care if the price goes up. I don't, I'm having a bad week. I don't want to do it. So that's my personal challenge is, is, is getting decisions made. Yeah, it does seem like a different, like it does seem even my age group, uh, is probably a generation below yours, Amanda. And it does seem like <laughs> getting, getting those decisions made and then, and then having, especially with the group having to coordinate with everyone seems to be an mm -hmm. extraordinarily difficult task sometimes. And I mean, do you have any tips on that on what, when you're dealing with these larger groups in, in one, getting that deposit or getting whatever funds you need at, at the appropriate time or two, just being able to communicate with so many people at once? Well, we, I use, I have, um, there are 14 of us going on Scarlet Lady um, in 13 days, as I mentioned earlier, and I've utilized group chat, email, we all get just so bogged down in, in emails. So for querying things and inversion in particular has a great app that shows um, shows your dining, shows, they call it the lineup, every, everything um, has different terminology, um, fun terminology with Virgin. And so I chat, you know, that way I'm telling the whole group, they're asking my advice about what to wear. I send them, I actually send them pictures of me on board and say, well, this is what I wore. <laughs> Um, so it's, I think chat is a great way for groups because, um, it, it just gets too hard and, and, and we have to watch our productivity as travel advisors. So we're spending more time selling and not, not administrating and, and not telling this, the group, you know, saying the same thing 10 different times also. Yeah. I know, so, I know really we, like there's that. a ton of options for that. You mentioned, uh, Google, uh, we 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 chat and then there's another one that it's uh it's it's a pretty big I, I, the name escapes me i'm sorry but i'm sure someone in the chat knows what i'm talking about the company that facebook owns now that oh uh, that a lot of uh instagram no <laughs> there's another one but i'm not, whatsapp whatsapp <laughs> is, is a big one i know oh for, yeah for, we use whatsapp when we're yeah when we're traveling yeah, yeah. 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 kimberly said it in the chat too so thank you kimberly uh <laughs> i only have one more amanda and then if there's any other outstanding questions i promise we have some time at the end we'll get to them um, but I, I was just curious because I know this is going to be a question a lot of advisors have to ask themselves, but when you're planning maybe a larger group, maybe a family or a multi-generational vacation, and you have some clients within the larger group who, yes, they want to spend time with their, with their friends and family, no matter the age, but they also want some time by themselves, some adults only time. Um, I'm curious if you have any tips for that, any, any tips for sort of changing some experiences during these multi-gen vacations into... Mm -hmm an adults only event. That's what's important. Like what I'm talking about using on sites is, is, is finding, uh, obviously you could plan an adult only dinner. You could find a place with a, uh, a private dining room, for example, but it really utilizing the people that are there or through your own personal experiences, or I rely a lot on like chat groups. Um, my first was a certified um, travel advisor group. Uh, we con we ask if there's a place we're not sure of, or if there's an experience that somebody says, you know, okay, we've got to get away from the kids. They're going to be, you know, we've got a, a babysitter with the kids, and we're in Barcelona. Um, you know, what where should we go? Those types of things, and that really the advisor group um, within your your agency or within um, different groups you can join on social media, I think are just such a easy, free 
um, way. We all want to help each other. There's plenty of business. We just have to, you know, learn from each other. Yeah, and I want to grab this one from Elizabeth in the chat. Uh, but you mentioned babysitting, and we just going back to the, we were talking about the details, shipping luggage, about getting that private transfer. Is that, would you ever arrange a babysitter for a couple who needs one when they're going to a foreign destination? Uh, I would call the concierge, but okay. no way. <laughs> yeah, just because that seemed like a very, a very uh, no. specific, yeah, and a very difficult task to, to have. You so know, it, it, that's best left to the concierge and they can handle the insurance issues and all that good stuff. Um, <laughs> so Deborah's asking about the uh, recording. Yes, this recording will be up on our website and our YouTube page later. Tom will drop the link back in the chat. Um, and then I really want to grab this one from Cynthia before we wrap up today, Amanda. And I, I saw this question to come up a couple times in a couple of forms as you were talking today and it's just about fees and i know we've done a lot about fees but i mean can you talk this through what not your fee structure but like what what having a fee does for you and for your business and and what what it does for you to be able to decide uh about taking on new business uh when they're presented with that fee well, first off, it positions you as a a professional just like you hire a financial planner and other types of professionals that you expect them to charge a fee. You are, your time is valuable. And if you go down with getting proposals, that the time is money and, and they need to see the value in that. Uh, otherwise they tend to abuse your you know kindness because the travel is so fun to talk about. I find myself like giving things away. I'm like, whoa, 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 I need to, I need to slow down because, um, you really have a better quality of client. You have a client that is committed and in you, you lay your process out in the beginning and they're much more appreciative and they realize how much work you're putting into it. You know, with, with, for example, with, with certain trips and being able to say those certain things like, Hey, when you're in Paris, go do this shopping experience or, um, Hey, why don't you think about shipping your luggage? You know, there's, they, the more value added things that you can bring and show your value, which involves charging fees, they're more likely to see your value and more likely to be repeat uh, clients. Yeah. And I mean, like you mentioned, Amanda, if, I mean, just try to go find a small detail on your trip by yourself online, like just, just the absolute avalanche of information that you have to sift through is impossible. So in having that information and having that knowledge is incredibly important whether amanda like you mentioned amanda you, you've experienced it yourself or you have the contacts in the local destination to 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 tell you is uh is incredibly valuable and i think i think consumers realize that now um and i see a lot of questions about fees i mean we have a few sessions not booked yet for the end of the year this year we're going to do our best to add a fee session if it's interested if it's of interest to all you on it, all you on the call today and all the rest of the guests we've had um so we'll do our best there um, but yeah, but I want to say thank you, Amanda, for your knowledge today. Uh, it was really great to talk to you. It was really great hearing about sort of your experience as a Pied Piper for a group and your experience getting into the industry and then how have you sort of built your business going along too. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity and I uh, appreciate all the, the comments. Yeah. Um, so again, <laughs> just a reminder, if anyone's interested in learning more about TikTok, we will be back in two weeks and we'll get that registration out to you again. Um, if anyone wants to rewatch this session, like 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 it's in the chat, it's uh it's hosted on our on our website, so you can check us out there. And I want to say thanks for joining. Uh, thanks for joining us to John Diorio too, who was in the front of the call and talking to us about Virgin Voyages. And uh, hope you have a good trip, Amanda. That like you mentioned, and I hope everyone else has a great rest of your week and great weekend. And I hope to see you all at our next session.